This is from a series of interviews that I shot in January of 2021 for the Mind Body Soul documentary project where we will be hiking the Continental Divide Trail and exploring the effects that nature has on our well-being. To find out more about the project, visit mindbodysoulfilm.com. Heather Sipes. We are in Galesburg, Illinois, Lake Story Park. I've been wanting to get into backpacking for quite some time. And it's one of those, it was like my interest. I didn't have anybody close to me that had the same interest. So um, the desire was there, but I didn't really have the means to know how to go about doing something like that. So then I stumbled upon Tony's group and it was just kind of all laid out for me. I didn't have to worry about planning anything. And so it's like I could learn about backpacking in a safe environment where I had support. I see a lot of women do it. And then, um, you know, we are pretty singular in our interests. And then when you start to come together, you meet more people, you're like, oh, a lot more people are into this. We've just all been kind of hanging back, afraid to step out because we just didn't have anybody else to do it with. Very kind of apprehensive at first, just because it's like, you know, you're going backpacking, you have to have what you need with you. And it's like, I didn't, I was really stressing about like there being like no room for error. And, um, but I found out really quickly that, um, you know, you just, you just go with it, you know? I mean, as long as you don't forget anything critical, I mean, you're going to be fine. So um, one of the things is like paring down enough stuff. It's just like, you kind of get a sense really quick as like what's important and what's not important. And so that's been, even now, it's like, I feel like I don't take a lot, but I still feel like I need to get rid of more stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's always, I'm always learning something every trip that I go on from other people, just watching them, looking at their gear, um, things that they talk about. And so I'm always just, I always come away from every trip with at least something that I can implement for myself going forward. Why did you decide to get into backpacking? Um, um, I, uh, I've always struggled with depression, um, probably from teen years and stuff. And um, then maybe about five years ago, um, I was just under a lot of stress and ended up developing anxiety. And so it's been, it's been tough coming back from that. But um, that's one of the things that nature does for me. Like I said, even as simple as sitting outside, I mean, that, that helps me, you know, calm my mind down, bring me some peace, and, and it helps me, um, being outdoors helps, you know, with the depression. I still get, I get seasonal affective disorder, and even though I think, I didn't have a bad winter, that first sunny spring day is like, oh my, there's a huge difference, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the things that I know helps me get through those things, and so that's why I try to, to make sure that I am getting outdoors, even in small amounts. Sometimes it's just, you know, a, it's like just this, this feeling, a little bit of heaviness. Um, that's kind of when the anxi anxiety comes into play. Sometimes when, if I'm in a bad depressive state, it's just like, it's all I can do just to get through the day. I feel like I'm on this edge of a black hole and if I'm just holding on tight to keep from, from falling. And I, I've never actually fallen, I guess you could say. I've never gotten so bad where I couldn't pull myself out of it. But when you do that for, you know, weeks, months at a time, I mean, it, it does. It just wears on you. And I haven't, I probably haven't been that bad in a couple of years now. So, um, I, but I've learned. I'm, the one thing about today is, in society is that people talk about this now. And, you know, there's information out there that didn't used to be out there. And so I know the factors in my life that need to be in place to help me keep it under control. And then the things that benefit me too to keep me from, you know, from getting too far into it. I can usually pull myself out of it. Being outside just kind of quiets my mind when my mind gets going and I can't stop it, it's like that will trigger the anxiety of it. So um, I just know when I get in that place that I need to, to stop and take a break. And then because being outside is so calming to me, that that's always my first choice, you know, when I'm in those situations is like, gotta get outside, you know, go for a walk, go for a hike, wh whatever I can fit in. It's like, that's, that's what I will choose to kind of help bring that situation back into control. 
I think one of the biggest things for me is like, I am not alone in this, you know, other people. And it's, it's okay to talk about. It's not something to hide, you know. And that's why usually if, if I do talk to people about it, I am pretty open about, you know, what it's been like for me because I want other people to understand, like, it's okay and you can get help. And, you know, you have to figure out what works for you to manage it. But again, having such an open society where you can talk about it and, and then the resources are out there. I think it's really, I know it's helped me and I'm sure it's helped a lot of people. What is so different about life on trail? Everyday life is like, is full of demands. It's like somebody always needs something, whether it's at home or at work. And, um, you know, I'm a wife and I am a mother. And when I'm on the trail, I mean, it's just me. It's just me and my thoughts and, you know, one foot in front of the other. It's, it's just completely, completely different. I would say from a female's perspective, um, you know, definitely we tend to not focus on ourselves in the everyday life. So to be able to separate like that and focus on ourselves, um, it's probably healthy for us mentally. You know, we get to think about things we wouldn't maybe necessarily think about on a day-to-day -day basis because we don't focus on ourselves. Do you prefer hiking alone? Um, I'm a natural introvert, so that's kind of my, my base point is, is just being alone and being in my own head. Um, I know for, you know, some people probably wouldn't handle that as well because they're just used to being around other people and they need that stimulation. So um, I would say it's probably beneficial for both. It's like, you know, I get more benefit out of being alone, but I do enjoy the interaction. But I have found like in the group setting, you're never always with somebody. You kind of come together and move apart. So it's just enough of socializing and interaction throughout a day that it's not overwhelming stimulation. You know, I still get that time by myself in the quiet. What does spending time in nature do for you? Yeah, I think it's just you're cutting out like just all the noise of life. You know, you're just stripping away the distractions and, you know, you're in a different place and you're all, um, you know, even though it's not like a survival situation or something like that, but, you know, you are you do have a goal and there are struggles and, you know, people support each other and encourage each other. And I think that just kind of just gives you the perfect groundwork, you know, for building friendships and, and things. So one of the first things I did notice is how my brain does go quiet, you know, and I don't, I don't listen to music or podcasts or anything when I'm hiking. I'm just, you know, just in the moment. And it's like, cause I had somebody ask me, it's like, well, you know, what do you do when you hike? And I'm like, I don't know. I just hike. It's like, I never really paid attention to, you know, what's going through my head. And then I started paying attention and it's just like, my mind's just quiet. You know, my, I'm like you, my mind is always going, there's a to-do list and things to check off and stuff. So it, just to step away from that and completely step away from it, it's just quiet. Especially when you have like, for most people, it's like multiple things going on at a time, you know, all different sources of stimulation and stuff. So just to shut all that down is an experience. I crave it when, like if I'm stressed or something, it's just like, you know, I need, I need that little bit of time to just shut it off. So maybe by doing that, it helps me work something out after the fact, but I don't head out specifically to work through something. I think it's a really good opportunity to, to meet people and to like expand your friends, even if they're just your friends in that specific scenario. You don't call each other up every week or anything. It's just like, you know, hey, we're back together again. You pick up where you left off. I found out that a couple people that I've hiked with a few times now are recovering alcoholics. And it's one of those things that it's like, I never would have thought, you know, nothing about my interactions with you said that you've been on this journey and that you've struggled with this. And so to hear them, you know, just to talk about it and everything, I mean, it's, it's eye opening to me just to somebody else's experience. But then I think, again, you build friendships, bases of trust and people open up to each other. And, and share things that are really personal to them. And I have to just assume it has to do with the circumstances, you know, uh, of what you're doing, you know, and you are kind of just, you're by yourself with this group of people, you know, removed from civilization and, you know, just the norm of everyday life. And I think you just build, you know, relationships quicker that way. I don't wanna say I look at people different, but I go into it with a completely different 
mindset. It's not about, you know, where you work and what you do in your professional life and things like that. It's just like we are all hikers when we come together with the same goal. Is there a spiritual aspect in nature for you? Um, I think the soul is just what, for me, it's just like, just what is my deepest self? You know, when you peel back the layers and, and tune out all the noise, it's like, you know, that that is what I would consider my soul to be. And I know in more recent years, it's like I've tried to focus a little more on, you know, like, who am I and, and what do I want out of life, you know, and then trying to, um, you know, pursue those things, you know, whether it's it's an actual like physical accomplishment or maybe it's just like, no, I need to, to just sit down and focus on this aspect of myself and just kind of wade through, you know, whatever that is and just take the time to, f to focus on it so I can be my best authentic self. I think you have, you know, different groups of people that are very aware and very in tune. I think some people um, are on the journey and I think some people are just too wrapped up in, you know, the everyday distractions and stuff to, to even consider it. I think there are a lot of benefits from being out in nature that people just don't realize are there or aren't getting because they just, they don't see it anymore. It's like, we see nature when we go on vacation, you know, that's kind of, how I think the majority of people consider being outdoors. And I think more people would find, you know, some sort of um, solace or just an opportunity to decompress, you know, if they just took the time to spend, you know, outdoors a little more. I think that's one of those things when, you know, when you do get the opportunity to start peeling back the layers of yourself is when you start to realize, you know, how you fill your life with things that, you know, you think are making you happy, but really aren't. So it's been a process of changes for me, just, you know, again, you know, figuring out what's going on and, and how to best navigate that on my own. Um, I've also have more of a voice in like, you know, I'm the only one in my family that backpacks. And yeah, it takes time away from my family, but at the same time, I'm not afraid to say, but I need this, you know, I need to have this. And, um, you know, it, they respect that and, and allow me that time. What's the biggest thing you have taken away from your hikes? Yeah, um, so I actually had COVID back in August. And um, so prior to that, I was like, you know, it was, I would have considered myself in, in really good shape. You know, I'd done the hikes, didn't really struggle too much. Um, and then I did a section hike of the AT maybe about two, two and a half months after I'd had COVID. And so that trip alone just, it really kind of opened my eyes to how much that had affected my body and how my body performs. Um, it was a tough hike, um, you know, it's just, there were some days that it was just like, <laughs> is it ever, is it ever gonna end? <laughs> and one of those days it like, it rained start to, to finish. So it's just like, you know, you've got the physical struggles, you've got the environmental struggles, and then you've got the mental struggles on top of that. So it was, it was really tough, but I came out of that knowing it's like, you did it, you know, and you can get back on track. You know, your, your body will recover and you'll be doing this, you know, again, and, and you'll be, it'll be better, it'll be fine. So I know that I'm capable and I know that, you know, if I challenge myself that I, I can get through. And even if, even if it's hard, you know, I know that I'm gonna push through and, and make it. So that's the biggest thing for me is just that, that self-confidence that it builds. Um, that's my biggest takeaway. And don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and follow us on social media to stay up to date with this project.